Welcome back to vlog part 2 of Miracles Cosplay Action! We're making Miracles Cosplay based on the pattern made by Kinpatsu Cosplay In the previous vlog, we already worked on the bodysuit mainly So we'll be doing foam work today Some extra patterning Probably get to the third part too we're jumping right into it and making our boot pattern. This is gonna be a sort of shoe cover pattern, so go on ahead and pop on your favorite shoes or the shoe that you plan to wear with this cosplay. Ideally, if you're making thigh-high boots, you'd want to cover your legs up to your thighs, but I like to be frugal with my duct tape and my saran wrap, so we're only going up about mid-shin and I'll extend the pattern later by hand. When you're done tracing, you're gonna want to outline your foot so that you can reach your pattern. Oh, hello, Monster Hunter armor that I might never finish. <laughs> this was not supposed to be a whole series, but apparently it is now, so yay! I promised you guys that I would be using the stuff that I got from Alfonso in the last part of the last vlog, which includes the dog shaver and the tights. So first, you're gonna want to outline your sole. You know, ideally you would get some help for this part. Unless you feel like some mild contortion. To that, you're gonna add one line down the shin and one line down the calf. So we'll trace that onto the fabric pattern later. I said I wanted to save some material, but that's gonna add some more steps to my pattern making. I need to measure how long to extend my fabric and the final circumference at which my pattern needs to end up. And there you got it. You just have to pry yourself out of it now. While being extremely careful not to hurt yourself, nor to cut off your cute socks. You can slowly snip down the pattern using regular scissors. And thus, you have your pattern. But we're gonna come back to the boots way later because next we're gonna work on the foam. This is 4mm thick EVA foam in white that we're gonna use to trace Miruko's cuffs and Miruko's ears. Last time we cut foam, I did emphasize that we have to sharpen our blade every time we use it, but a few vlogs ago, I replaced the blade, so the cutting actually went super smoothly. I actually forgot that we also had a thousand of these little pieces to cut, but that's what the scrap foam is for. So we're gonna try to minimize our waste and trace the tiny pieces onto the white, and the rest onto the black. In case you're wondering, there's no difference between the black and the white foam. This is also EVA foam, 4mm thick. I used the white foam for the other pieces because white fabric was gonna go over them. I'm gonna use black foam for the next few pieces because it's gonna be easier to paint them silver later on. So in black foam, we're gonna have the belt pieces and most of the pieces for the bunny feet. So we're about to cut fur and I'm debating on whether I should use tiny scissors or an exacto. So we'll try both, see which one works best. I don't know what these stains are and I don't plan to figure out what they are either. Okay, okay, this works but it cuts maybe a bit too much into it. Maybe if I press lighter. Okay, I press lighter, it works. Yes. So I think that using an exacto works if you cut just enough that you can tear the rest apart. Because you don't want to cut all the way through and accidentally cut all this pretty fur. So yeah, I guess just gently press. Not too hard. You can always go over it again. I am not tugging that hard. So anything that requires too much tugging, probably didn't cut enough, so I'm just gonna go over it again. There's low-key a lot of fur particles flying everywhere, so I would definitely recommend working with a respirator of some sort, or a mask at least, just to protect your lungs. Cosplay safety! Everything was going smoothly in the fur kingdom as we engaged in cosplay safety, but it was at that moment that I realized that I forgot to cut out seam allowance. So, uh, big oopsie. I forgot to cut the other one with seam allowance. As I traced a line in my second one, I remembered that. So, I don't know what to do. <laughs> We're gonna try to, where is it? We're gonna try to interface 
it. I think this is interfacing. We're gonna try to interface it to salvage the piece that I just cut. And I think I'm just gonna keep one piece bigger than the other. Like that when it covers the ears, it'll kind of wrap over it. And hopefully that won't be too much of a big deal. So I cut off a piece of interfacing and this the shiny side is the side that's kind of sticky. So we're hoping that it's just enough to mend everything and keep everything together as we continue with the project. So you want to just be careful because everything is synthetic and you don't want to melt the fur either. You can kind of see the crease where I cut, but hopefully this is enough to keep it holding together. And we can proceed to cut it again, but with seam allowance this time. And we're gonna save all the fur bits for the tail. I've decided that I can't live with myself if I don't fix my ear mistake, so we're gonna redo it. You see, originally I had planned to use a cheaper fur for the inside of the ears, but looks like I'm gonna have to use the other one anyways. With fur, it's a bit harder to optimize the use of the space because you really have to take into account the grain of the fur too. Is it the grain? The direction of the pill? This might be a silly advice, but vacuum your fur, you'll thank me in the long run. For those of you still worried about my occasional waist training habits, I just want to reassure you again that I eat fine, I breathe fine. I actually take it off when I eat my biggest meal, which is my dinner, because you can't stop me from eating a lot. I'll be honest with you, coming from a healthcare provider background, I was actually very worried about muscle atrophy and like posture dependency on the long term. But then I got informed, I did my fair share of research, but, like actual medical paper research. Everybody who waist trains wears it for a different amount of times for different sorts of results. The effects of waist training are temporary. Everything kind of goes back if you stop wearing it for a few days anyways. Hence, waist training. I'm not telling you to go out and buy yourself a corset right now. I just agree with so many people on the fact that there's still so much misinformation being shared about it. Bad publicity for it. And that just kind of perpetualizes the idea that this is a weird torture device when it's really just another article of clothing. So I want to give it some good publicity. For the next part, usually I just go outside and put on the contact cement, but I think it's like negative 11 outside today and my contact cement would not work. So we're gonna go sit in the garage and hopefully that is just warm enough or a bit warmer. I don't get this piece of hair. Won't really go down, also won't really go up. What do I do with this? But first, we have to heat seal our foam and shape it. My hands were actually frozen, so it really helps to set the foam into place. I also marked all the places that needed contact cement. So I just read up how Kinpatsu did her belt. She covers most of her armor pieces in a stretch fabric, and I don't have a silver stretch fabric. I was just gonna flex bond it and paint it in silver, and I think the way that I do it it might be more flimsy, so I'm gonna change the way that she did it a bit and add an extra layer of two millimeter foam in the back. And hopefully everything holds together. I just need to replicate the pieces so that I have this extra layer of two millimeter foam under my four millimeter foam. I know that covering your foam with fabric is a really hot technique right now. I have yet to successfully do that, I'll be honest with you. I am still confused on what kind of glue and how people do it, but I don't know. I find contact cement so hard to spread on fabric. So two millimeter foam is super fun to work with because it well it's super thin so you can easily manipulate this you will even see me often just cut it with scissors i don't know why i'm holding my exacto like this but it's working i can't follow a straight line no matter how i hold my exacto anyways so now i'm gonna cut out the grooves on the pattern and trace that onto the thick foam so that when we put the thin foam in the back there's still a backing
and we'll see how this all turns out when we glue it together. So I just went downstairs to check and it's not that bad in the garage if I don't open the door. I might just open the door after I put on the contact cement so that it can ventilate a bit more. But yeah, let's go down. We can go out and take a little breather break while it dries. Although it shouldn't take that long. Oh god, this is a lot of sun. This slab of foam absolutely stinks. Oops, oh my god, don't stink. This part is hella stressful, but we're just gonna have to do it. Um, I'm not sure how. Let me come up with something. In case you haven't noticed, I improvise a lot. We're gonna tape in the scraps that we cut out so that the belt can hold a basic shape. At least temporarily until we can slap on the inner foam layer and re-remove the little foam scraps after. I am well aware that I am crazy. But watch it, bye. This will work. <laughs> Start smack in the middle and I hope that everything lines up. Now I can safely pop these out. Now the only problem is this, but I will probably just duct tape it together. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, why not? You won't see the insides anyways. This will be our little secret. This is so ugly though. All right, let's go do it. First, we'll just salvage all these pieces of duct tape because it would be a waste just to throw them out. I wanted to avoid doing this because it's just such a hassle to come down here. <laughs> this is so thin. And while that dries, we can continue on <sighs> with the fur. Pinning the fur helps place the pill in a way that will minimize the crushing. Basically, it'll minimize the amount of work that you need to do afterwards to conceal the seam. You'll want to assemble all the pieces together to form the cover for the foam ear. For now, we'll go back to the foam. Because of the curvature of the foam, uh the stuff that I traced wasn't very accurate anymore. We're just gonna have to trim that off and call it a day. Vacuum on standby. Actually, first we have to open this and uh, figure out how this works. I assume it's the same thing as a regular hair clipper. Oh, it's like a whole grooming kit. There's literally a hair clipper and a hair filer too. <laughs> Look at that! That's so freaking cute! There's all the different lengths right here. This is gonna be very useful because it's gonna be a very messy little job we have. Well, apparently the cable is only to charge it, so it's actually wireless. It says that I should charge it for 4 hours before the first use. I will give it max 30 minutes. We'll let it charge while we hand clip it first. We start by turning the ears inside out and then untangle it, especially at the seams where the fur might have been caught inside. Next, you're gonna plan out where you want what length of fur and make sure that you can differentiate the front from the back and start chopping. Honestly, everything's quite doable by hand. In the end, the clippers are just an extra tool that might give you a more uniform finish. I finished kind of just roughly trimming everything. This is also my first time making ears, so I'm just experimenting, really. Actually, I lied. Second time, but that was god knows how many years ago. And since it's getting dark, I figured I'd just let this charge and we can get back to it tomorrow. We're finally gonna try these! I have a newfound respect for ear makers. If you're like me and have difficulty knowing where you're going, it's good to take frequent breaks and just reevaluate your work. Essentially, it's a lot of shaving and shaving and shaving, and eventually you'll get where you want to be. Throughout the whole process, I kept changing the hair length, but I was never satisfied. Eventually, I just decided to pop it open and use it as is, and the end results were pretty satisfying, but we still need to add some shadow and contrast. 
there is a poop load of snow outside. And on that, we're gonna wrap it up. We didn't get to do everything that we wanted, but that's what the future vlogs are for. Join me next time as we attempt to finish the project. It's not that I have difficulty finishing the project. I think it's more I have difficulty compressing everything into one video. Maybe I talk too much. Yeah, we need to color the hair. We need to paint the armor. We need to maybe hem the suit, the gloves. We need to finish the stockings. We'll see where we get. So until then, see you next time, maybe.